It's not a game that I don't think I've ever come across. Thundercats for the Nintendo DS. Stickers over the name so much because it's a little annoying with the games, especially. Ooh, what's up, internet? Welcome back to the collecting quest. A lot of changes coming this week. Let's flip this around. All right, a few things that I wanted to work on is just the location of my collecting quest shelf. I think I'm going to be flipping it around to where I keep my Star Wars book collection and my DVD and Blu-ray collection, I guess. So before we do any of that, let's take a look at what we needed to talk about from last week. I kind of tried to end the video like four different times last week from what I remember, and I kind of had more stuff to add to the shelf from what we got. This stuff, well, the GameCube games and Scarface is all from the flea market. A $10 deal, cases and some manuals only. Very good deal. And then we have Batman Arkham Origins and Trauma Center, which I would have kept Trauma Center, but damage on the spine is no good in my book. So we're gonna be selling those off. So this collecting quest, we're going to be focusing on getting rid of mainly these two first shelves i want to start dropping some prices getting these items moved because i don't want to have a whole shelf full of items i want all this stuff to go all this stuff to go i want stuff to be moving so if the prices i have them at are too high they're gonna go down pretty quick compared to what i would normally do on ebay because i want cash flow for the collecting quest also in my haste, I forgot to mention these two items. First up, we have Brain Age 2, which is an odd choice to add to the collection, but I did just hear more about it in Scott the Waz's video that he put out like a week ago, probably a month ago by the time you guys see this video. And it sounds like something that might actually be interesting just to have uh, and potentially mess around with. And then 1080 Avalanche. Now, I had this game sitting around my office. This isn't actually something that I picked up per se recently. I had this in a non-GameCube case for the longest time and I was waiting for a GameCube case to actually add it to my collection. So I'm gonna just add it to the collecting quest right now because I technically was able to add that to my collection because one of the GameCube games, I think it was like a cheap, I don't even remember a Harry Potter game that I was able to salvage the case from uh, and use for 1080 Avalanche, so. Yeah. All right, just leaving the Goodwill. Semi-questionable picks, just because in the past I've been able to sell Lord of the Rings two towers for like $16, you know, straight up. 
so five dollars for it ain't bad right now on ebay it's about ten dollars eleven dollars so i don't know it's a game that might sit on my collection shelf for a little bit and maybe we move it to the sale shelf and get rid of it because i'm not going to play it likely but i know that previously leaving it behind for five dollars would have been a mistake Nice little pickup here, should go for about 40. All right, we got that all switched around. I think it looks much better over here. Got it a little bit more spread out. Got kind of a mess of toys that I'm honestly not that sure what I'm doing with yet. I just kind of collected a ton of Power Rangers Lightning Collection, but then kind of fell off it as the prices increased at MSRP. And have, I think, almost all of the Turtles in Time NECA figures, but like, I've never actually opened them or played with them or taken a look at them. So it's just like kind of, like video games are my main thing. I like the idea of toys, but toys generally are something that kind of price me out of them very often, uh, whether it's vintage toys or current toys. So if I come across stuff, I kind of pick it up. Like I have a bunch of Power Rangers, Zords and stuff down there, but, and a whole bin full of interesting stuff here. I don't know. We'll try and figure it out. I might need eventually more shelf space, so this cluster F of stuff might need to go. But anyway, so just to get it out of the way, let's rapid fire. Luigi's Mansion. <coughs> Batman Arkham Origins. Lego Dimensions. Transformers Devastation. Shadow of Adam. Shantae. <coughs> and last but surprisingly not least... Both copies of Madden 13. All right, like I mentioned before, I'm going to be adding these two games to the shelf for the collection. Pac-Man Fever, because it looks interesting. It looks like a board game featuring a whole bunch of different Namco properties. Will I ever play it? Hard to say, but I'd like to play it. So that'll be added. And then tentatively, we have Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, which... I think I played a little bit of it at a friend's house back when it came out, and it seems okay. It's just not really the kind of game that I need for my collection, and I kind of bought it because this game, like, fluctuates in value sometimes, and in the past, like, month, I've been able to get, like, $16 for it, and right now it's closer to, like, 10 so 5 bucks for it wasn't that bad. For now, we're going to add it to the collection. And I also don't know if I've gone over it quite yet this week, but... This was basically our starting loot. What we started this uh, collecting quest off on. This is what we have left. I've been dropping prices on it to try and get it out the door. And to get more money in the uh, loot bag there. But... It takes time. And then, here's from... The stuff we gained in episode one, the stuff from episode two, then our crazy episode three spans three shelves a little bit here, and this is the first thing I could really add from this episode I'm filming now, episode four, for sale, uh, the Skylanders Trap Team that we found at Game Exchange for 10 bucks. Should sell for about 40, about to get that listed. All right, so we had a little bit of pawn shop luck there, which is really cool because, well, the pawn shops in my area, despite what well, unknown video game hunter and gamers men while are able to find, going downhill quite a bit. 
they used to have like set prices on their games and their games are always in like absolutely dis destroyed disgusting condition for instance <laughs> the blitz not even the right game in there it's got time splitters two and i'm gonna have to resurface the disc uh because of the price there they only charged me two bucks for it i don't know why but in the case, they had the Mario Wiimote, the Wii Motion Plus. And I already have the Luigi one, so I'm actually going to hold on to this. So this is going to be a collection pickup. And they only charge 15 bucks for this. So, really good deal. Oh, I should mention the other games that were uh, in that stack that I showed. Uh, they wanted $10 each on. Some of those I was only going to be able to get 15 on eBay. So, and, and they were all pretty mediocre condition missing manual nothing crazy death jam uh icon was probably the best one at like 25 but even then the disc was questionable so all right so i have to re-record that last clip because uh it didn't quite make sense hey guys Corey's sitting in the editing chair and i realize while editing this there is no clip of me getting these game boys so i guess i'll explain it here I uh, went into another pawn shop and had some luck, was able to haggle. They've had these these uh, Game Boys for a while, and I was able to get them for, maybe I explain it in the clip because I don't remember, but they're already gone. They never made it to the shelf. So from a pawn shop, I was able to pick up these two Game Boy Colors tested, worked perfectly fine uh, for 55 each, and God of War for $12. Now, all the math I had done was based on out-the-door pricing. Uh, unfortunately, they're one of those pawn shops that just has to charge you tax for some reason. They can't, you know, do out-the-door out the door pricing. So, a little bit of our profit margin got ate up by that. So, that kind of sucks. So, our numbers from the last clip that I had filmed that I'm not going to use don't make sense. But... Uh, basically, we spent 130 bucks to make like 15. But, but, which sounds horrible, and it is, but it's instantaneous. Like it's already, I've already, I've already sold these. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And that's the uh, the time splitters too. That was in the case of the uh, blitz game from before. And once again, you know, that's there. Everything so far this week has sold. And one from last week. This has to be the worst thing ever. All right, at the game exchange today, I actually had two pickups that were really cool. Um, Deadpool, this is the second time I tried to pick it up at this price. First time that they actually had the disc, so happy to have that. That's like a, a $45 game for about half price, so gonna get some decent profit on that. My voice is slowly repairing itself. Um, and then a game that I don't think I've ever come across. Thundercats for the Nintendo DS. I remember a little bit about the show, the new show. Like, I'm very familiar with the original. But the new show, I think it came out at a time when it was very difficult to watch things legally without, like, finding a weird YouTube uh, random episodes and then they get taken down by the, by the networks or whatever. I don't know. But I remember enjoying it. It was very, very, very different than the original, which I wasn't that keen on, but cool to have the game. I don't know if there are many other, or any other, Thundercats games. It's one of those franchises that, for some reason, didn't get any licensed games for, like, the NES or the Super Nintendo, um, at least stateside. Maybe it did in other uh, regions, but not in the United States, so that's pretty cool. Side-scrolling uh, action. Probably a game I'm going to add to the collection, to be honest. It's worth more than the $13 I paid. It goes for about $25. Okay. 
get finally some games to add to this week's. It was looking barren because we had sold stuff immediately. So another little peek behind the scenes. Uh, it's been a while since I actually game hunted. Today was the first day in a little bit because it's weird to do when you're so far ahead on the series and at this point of me filming this clip, I've only released the first two episodes. So I'm kind of at a point where it's like, what have I done so far? What have I looked for? I feel like I'm kind of just doing the same things over and over again. So a little bit of this has been trying to find new places to go, new ways to hunt for games. If you have any suggestions for me on what I can do to make this a little bit more interesting, leave it in the comments below. I really enjoy trying out new things. All right, and we have the elusive shelf ad. I don't really know where to put it, but there we go. Let's take a look at what I was able to get from Sam at the flea market. Um, absolutely great deal. Some things I've never seen before. This PSP camera. This is a 0.3 megapixel camera that was used for the game Invisibles for the PSP. It was for like 20 bucks. I, I picked it up because it was an auto D and I kind of wanted to show it on the video, to be honest with you. Kind of a little bit of my old... Uh, my old ways of wanting to put things on YouTube instead of making decisions that are profitable, I guess. But he kind of threw this in, so it doesn't matter. Paid 150 for everything that you're seeing here. Some of it has already sold. Um, these I am getting. What is it? 17 cash. No questions asked about uh, the rest of the stuff. This is about an $80 game. Come across it every once in a while. Easy eBay flip. This he also kind of threw in. I, he saw me eyeing it. It goes for 25 ish It's like the least desirable version of Amazing Spider-Man 2, of course, because it's on the Wii U. And then these three here. I kind of want to keep them for my collection because I do like Ratchet and Clank. I watched playthroughs of the most recent games. Uh, I played a little bit of the original Ratchet and Clank on the PS2, and it would be nice to have it all on a collected edition, and the PS3 edition is pretty cool. So I think I'm going to hold on to these. Let's add them to the shelf. Only ones that are ended up on the cell shelf, which I guess I could rearrange here. Let's see if I dump any games to the floor like I usually do. And for the collection... I we'll have to do a little bit of rearranging, but these three are going up here. Horrible showmanship. There we go. All right, after some absolutely chaotic rearranging, this is what we have for the collecting quest. This is our collection that we've built so far. Keep in mind that these three N64 games are missing the cartridges. I do have the manual for Diddy Kong Racing, but the other ones are just the boxes. And what we have here is what we have left at the end of this episode for stuff for sale. Small amount of wanting to pull Tools of Destruction and putting it in the collection. I might actually reconsider that. That one might be something I do. Because if I'm going to collect the other Ratchet games, might as well. Yeah, we're, we're just going to do that right now. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Ta-da. And then what we have left from the shelf... and what we got this episode. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode of The Collecting Quest. 
please leave a like rating down below. And if you want to do me a favor today, go check out my podcast, Cartoon Commentary. Available on pretty much any podcatcher. Hope you guys have a nice day.